Okay, this was the show I wanted to review for so long. I remember watching this show years ago when I found it on demand back in the day. Now that it's streaming on Paramount Plus, let's dive right in, shall we? Yo, what is up my Cinedroids? G to the S here. Today, I'm gonna be reviewing one of my favorite iterations of the beloved franchise of all time, based on the IDW comics of the same name, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The one that first premiered in 2003, that is. Warning, not only will this be a long synopsis of what this show is about, but it may also contain some spoilers in it. So if you guys haven't seen the entirety of season one, which you should, and you're still concerned about spoilers, mute this video in three, two, one. This season primarily focuses on the turtles slowly coming into conflict with the Foot Clan. After their lair is destroyed by Baxter Stockman's Mousers, played by Scott Williams, they find a new home elsewhere in the sewers and form new allies in the form of April O'Neil, played this time by Veronica Taylor, and Casey Jones, played this time by Mark Thompson. The turtles foil the plans of the Shredder, played this time by Scott Rayo, Hun, played by Greg Carey, and Stockman on numerous occasions before Shredder offers Leonardo, played this time by Michael Stinter Nicholas, a peace offering in exchange for their service, citing an unknown evil they must face together. Splinter, played this time by Darren Dunstan, reveals that Shredder and Hun's hand into murdering his master Hamada Yoshi, and the two sides come to blows in a battle that seemingly ends in the Shredder's defeat. However, unknown to the turtles, the Shredder survives. And after his ninjas savagely ambush and wound Leonardo, he destroys April's home and believes them dead. Though the turtles Splinter, Casey, and April survive and depart for Casey's family farmhouse in rural New York. After Leonardo's wounds heal and their resolve is restored, the group returns to New York and Face the Foot Clan. However, after their triumph against the Shredder, Splinter vanishes. And after following a lead from a mysterious group known as the Guardians, the Turtles discover the Utroms, an alien race hiding amongst humanity, and are unable to save Splinter from them before being teleported into space. Will they ever find Master Splinter? Will the Turtles ever return home, defeat their enemies, and save not only New York City, but the entire world as well? Gotta watch to find out. First off, the use of the show's hand-drawn animation in the mix of the CG visuals and cinematography may look a bit dated, but mainly it's because cartoons like this were becoming a trend back in the early to the mid-2000s. They have to make it at the very least as good as possible for the people who grew up in the Ninja Turtles, as well as newcomers, especially young kids, to buy into the hype. And for me, the end result was, in terms of the show's story and plotline when it comes to the writing, it's very well executed. I gotta say, when it comes to the show's action sequences, the way they can animate the fight scenes where the four turtles are throwing down against the Foot Clan, as well as their lackeys who work for the Shredder. Like the Purple Dragons led by Hun, the big shot brute of the whole bunch, they got that down packed. I was on the edge of my seat during moments where the four turtles are getting their rear ends handed to them. And while on that subject, the Shredder in this show? Man, he means business! Now, yeah, I liked how he did the character in the 2014 film, directed by Jonathan Liebsman, not Michael Bay. He's the one who produced it. But in comparison to Out of the Shadows, which I will touch on in a little bit, but the way he was played out in the original, sure, say all you want about him, but I thought he was a tough guy to take down. He seems like a legit villain. Not just on how he looks in terms of design, but in terms of how they developed the character and how he was written. I liked him, even for the little screen time he spent throughout the whole movie. But the way they incorporated him in the sequel? Not so much, unfortunately. Not only did he not have his mask on throughout the whole movie, but he went out like a punk. He never seemed threatening. All he does is stand around, send out his goons to threaten the main heroes, and just chicken out for the rest of the film. Not impressed whatsoever. But that's neither here nor there. In terms of character development, the way they incorporated him in this show? 
Bravo, give yourselves a pat on the back. He was menacing. Not only was he tough for the turtles to defeat him, but he's a master manipulator. He can play mind games with them. He's determined to thwart the turtles from their goal in saving humanity from his ultimate power to cause some anarchy in the city. So again, give yourselves a round of applause for your hard work into developing the characters for the show. The turtles still act like brothers working together fighting for the greater good. Splinter is still a father to his sons. April O'Neil is a great female sidekick as she should be and Casey Jones is still the beloved crazed maniac who wants nothing more than to kick some butt whenever he needs to and in terms of directing the show which I will touch on in more detail because that would take immensely long and I don't want to bore you guys on that but the voice actors did an excellent job voicing their characters and portraying their characters the way we want them to be portrayed solid props to Dong Wu Productions Mirage Studios and 4Kids Entertainment for making them feel authentic to the comics they were portrayed in. Let's see how well you'll do once I watch season two. Fingers crossed. And of course, this is one of those cartoons who never shy away from making the show as emotional and down to earth as possible. There are a handful of moments where you feel like the turtles are struggling to reach their goal and you're just rooting for them to survive by the end of it. There are even a few episodes involving the part where Leo gets his butt kicked, like badly. Beaten up, bruised, can barely breathe, he can even hardly walk because he fought hard against Shredder and his minions. And throughout those few episodes, I was legit concerned on whether or not he can recover from that, even though I know what happens to him later on. But still, I gotta give kudos to the writing team for making us care for the characters and cheering them on to overcome their obstacles by the show's end. Awesome job, keep up the great work. Now as for the comedic moments in the show, I enjoyed them. Now, granted, I didn't laugh out loud at the jokes in the show, but they were at the least bit enjoyable to watch. Most of the jokes in the show are pop culture references. Now, you might think it might be a ludicrous idea to put those jokes in there, but since this is a Ninja Turtles franchise, it works out pretty well. So again, kudos for making the comedy moments very tongue-in-cheek and enjoyable, rather than making us uncomfortable with childish potty humor and cringe-worthy moments that we have to endure every now and again. Keep up the great work. So overall, guys, in the end, I highly enjoyed the 2003 Ninja Turtles series so far. It was emotional, action-packed, it had decent animation, but the writing in terms of story is what made this show so incredible. And as a result... I rate season one a solid five out of five stars. I'm totally ready for season two. Be sure to stay tuned once I have that review up. Again, knock on wood. Let's hope it lives it up. So season one of the 2003 Ninja Turtles series. Have you seen every episode? If you haven't, dude, you are totally missing out. It's on Paramount Plus right now. If you have an account, please do so. I highly recommend it. But for those of you who have, Come back and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Also, if you like this video and you want to see some more, make sure that like button shines in your face. That'll totally help me out a ton. Also, share it with your family and friends and favorite it. That's a very good way to show support for this review. Also, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell right next to you so you can be notified of future videos that I have in store for you. Also, if you want a shout out in a future video, just follow me on both Instagram and Twitter and I will choose one of my Synodroids to be displayed as a shout out. The link's in the description below. Also, if you want to subscribe to my gaming channel, there's either a link in the description or at the icon card at the top right corner of your screen. Go over there, subscribe, and let's have fun together. But until then, I'll see you next time. Peace out.